Hey! Today I'm gonna show you how to replace your disc brake pads. I'm sure you're like, wait a second, these aren't disc brake pads for a bike. Well, you would be absolutely right. These are brake pads for a car. They're just much bigger, so easier to see. Anyway, let's get started. But first, let's start with a bit of theory. So basically how disc brakes work is that you've got a disc, pads, and a caliper, which is the brake unit itself. And the caliper will apply pressure on the brake pads on the rotor or the disc in order to slow you down. And there are two types of calipers. They could either be mechanical or hydraulic. In this case, uh, we'll talk about hydraulic disc brakes because they're more and more common. And it's also the system that people fear the most because they think it's super complicated and hard to maintain and everything. But fear not, it's pretty simple when you know how to do it. So let's talk about the caliper. The caliper is the component that holds the brake pads. And it's also the component that applies pressure on the brake pad so it can brake on the disc. And the way it's done is with hydraulic pressure. So the brake caliper is basically a component which is holding two pistons inside and both pistons are held in place by a square ring or a square seal that allows the piston to move out and then back in. It's actually the seal that's helping the piston returning to its original position. And that is a very critical thing to keep in mind when we will push back the pistons in. Anywho, the next component we'll talk about is the brake pad itself. So again, with my car brake pad, because it's much bigger, this is the backing plate, which is made out of steel or aluminum or titanium and even carbon. And uh, let me know in the comment section if you know of any other material that can be used to make a backplate. But basically these are the four most common material used to make brake pad backplates. So the backing plate has three purposes. The first one is to uh, hold the braking compound. The second one is to be held in place in the caliper. And the third one is also to cool down this whole thing because braking generates heat and heat has to be dissipated. And most manufacturer will use the backing plate to dissipate heat. Then the braking compound, like the, the what is actually used to slow you down, is made of organic or metallic materials. In this case, this is organic. And today on my bike, I will also be replacing my disc brake pads with organic brake pads with a aluminum backing plate. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too boring. So here's what you're gonna need to replace your disc brake pads. A flat blade screwdriver, Allen keys, new disc brake pads that fit your bike, a tire lever, a clean rag, soft soap, and Q-tips. So let's start by removing the wheel. So one thing, once you've removed the wheel, you should not press on the brake lever because it will squeeze in the brake pads. And if you press repeatedly, eventually both brake pads will connect and it will be really hard for you to uh, push them back in. And if you removed already your brake pads and you keep pushing on your lever, what will happen eventually is that the pistons will actually come out of the caliper and you really don't want that because first it's gonna be messy, secondly, secondly, it will be really hard to rebuild your caliper unless you have new seals and like a whole bunch of tools. Make it a habit when you remove your front wheel, don't press on your brake lever. So if you've never replaced disc brake pads before, you'd be tempted to just remove the old ones, put the new ones in, and then put back your wheel in your bike. But it's not going to work. Your disc will be rubbing against your brake pads so hard that the wheel will barely turn. And the reason why is because the old brake pads have worn out and have become thinner. So the piston came out a little bit with time. And when you put in new brake pads, while the brake pads are thicker, which leaves less room for the disc to move freely. So what needs to be done is push back the pistons in. But if you do that right now, 
it will potentially damage your caliber. And this is where disc brakes for bikes differ from disc brakes for cars, because basically both brake pads work in a very similar way. There's a backing plate and there's a braking compound. Rotors will also work the same way. They're attached to a hub and they turn. And in both cases, brake pads will squeeze the rotor on both sides equally in most circumstances. But where both systems differ is in the caliper construction. The piston is held in place in the caliper with the same square seal that allows the piston to move out and come back in. But it also has outside a dust boot which prevents all the debris you can think of of contaminating the piston. But on a bike there is no such thing. So as you are wearing out your brake pads, the pistons are coming out and they're totally exposed to all the elements and the dirt and the debris uh, you come across while you're riding. So before pushing back your pistons inside your caliper, you must clean them out. Otherwise, you risk damaging that square seal. And if that happens, the oil will leak and your braking performance will be affected. And if you have dot oil like on a SRAM uh, system, the oil is actually going to damage your paint and uh, you don't want that either because it's super hard to clean and uh, that's it. Before pushing back your pistons in, here's what you need to do. So in this case, it's a SRAM HDR caliper. There's a small uh, retaining clip that we need to remove and you just remove it like this. Here's the clip. It's super small, it's easy to lose, but it's also included in the new brake pads kit. So if you happen to lose it, well, you've got a new one. Then we will remove the holding screw, which is a pin that helps aligning both uh, brake pads in the caliper. And then you just push out both brake pads like that and uh, these are the OEM brake pads and they wear super fast compared to the uh, replacement pads you can get. So sometimes you'll hear uh, your disc brakes squealing and there's one reason why that might happen is that this little spring here will eventually contact your rotor and this will make like a squeak sound. So that's potentially one of the reasons why your brakes are squeaking. And if you are at that point, it really means that your brake pads need replacement because the next step is that the spring itself will be breaking against the rotor and then you will be damaging your rotor uh, to a point where you need to replace it. Now that we have removed the old brake pads, we need to prepare the caliper for the new brake pad installation and this is how we do it. You will need your clean rag and your soft soap. It could be any soap, but just like no WD-40. Don't use brake cleaner. Just don't use brake cleaner. You're gonna get cancer. It's, it's, it's messy, it smells, it pollutes, it's in a can, it's aerosol. Don't use brake cleaner. Don't do it. But yeah, soft soap. So you push, push the soap on the clean rag. And then what you want to do is squeeze in your rag like this and you want to clean as much as you can the inside of the caliper from all the debris. That's step one. So you can see it's pretty dirty. So this part here is the piston and there's one on both sides of the caliper. And before you push back this in the caliper, you need to clean the outside of the piston. In my case, they're not completely out, so it's less of a problem. But in some cases, when the brake pads are really worn out, there's more piston exposed to the debris. And the more the piston is exposed, the deeper it will go back in the caliper, risking damaging the seal. So this is where we will be using the Q-tip. We use the Q-tip to uh, clean the outside of the pistons. So same idea, I'll just spray a bit of soft soap on the q-tip and then carefully i'll be cleaning the outside of the piston with the q-tip and you can see already that even though i cleaned with the rag there's still a lot of dirt left so you want to do that as thoroughly as you can actually and now let's do the other side 
Okay, great. So as you saw, the piston was quite dirty and I removed most of it, well, almost all of it with the Q-tip and the soft soap. Now that we have cleaned our pistons, we are going to make sure everything is dry and clean before pushing the pistons back in. So this is where the rubbing alcohol comes in. I'm just gonna swipe the Q-tip with rubbing alcohol around the pistons to make sure everything is clean before pushing the pistons back in the caliper. So next step is to push back the pistons in and for that I'm gonna use this tire lever which is made out of plastic. It squeezes perfectly in inside the caliper and I'll show you how to do it. I'm using the tire lever to push back the pistons in and the reason why I'm using this one is because it's got two flat sections which will help me push against the piston evenly. So I'm gonna start with the one on this side and making sure it's flat against the piston. I'm just gonna push slowly and evenly on my tire lever to push the piston back inside the caliper. And I recommend doing this fairly slowly because you don't want any components in the hydraulic system to fail because you push the piston too far in too fast. And I'm just gonna do the inside piston now. So slowly pushing back the piston inside the caliper. And if at some point you feel like you're failing or damaging something, stop <laughs> and just go to the bike shop. You can see the piston is flush with the caliper unit on this side and also on the inside. Now that the pistons are pushed back in, uh, let's install the new brake pads. So the next step is quite simple. It's just a matter of inserting the brake pad assembly. Just squeeze in your pads like this. In this case, the pad will sit in the caliper and once they're pushed in, it's done. And notice how I didn't struggle in any kind of way. If you're struggling, you probably didn't clean your caliper well enough or your pistons are not pushed in enough. So make sure this is going in smoothly. Let's put in the retaining pin. So that's done and now the only thing left to install is the safety pin. So the safety pin goes on the retaining pin, makes a click noise, this is secure. There you go. The next thing we need to do is clean the disc. So I'm just gonna wipe the disc with rubbing alcohol. You could do it with soap, there's no problem with that as long as you rinse it uh, well, otherwise it's gonna squeak. The rotor is clean, let's install the wheel. So I've installed the wheel and I made it spin. Right now it's not rubbing against the brake pads, so that's a good sign that the caliper is potentially well uh, aligned with the disc. Chances are that it is because I've installed that caliper before, but you never know. Right now what I'm going to do is apply the brakes until the brake pads contact the disc and once that is done, I'll check for a caliper alignment over the disc. But I hear you asking, like, what if the caliper is not centered over the disc? Well, in that case, you would need to realign the caliper and uh, that is a subject for a whole new video because if we were to do this today, it would make it like a super long video and you would click off and leave and I don't want that. So let's move on to the next step. So the last thing to do is the pads break in. And the reason why you wanna do a braking procedure is to not burn your brand new brake pads. So the way I do the braking procedure is this. I go for a quick bike ride in which I will get up to about 20 k's an hour and then I will apply the brakes gently until I'm completely stopped and I will do that for about 20 times. Okay, so we're done with the brakes. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, give it a dislike. I'm considering doing a whole series of like short tutorials like that. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon.